Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Leo Tonkin. We're going to be talking all about salt therapy, otherwise known as halo therapy. Leo started Salt Chamber, the world's leading salt therapy product equipment and decor company over a decade ago, and he has created an entire industry for providing safe, drug-free, evidence-based salt therapy to help with your respiratory system. Now, let's face it. We live in indoor environments that are kind of toxic with mold infections on the rise and the pandemic and different kinds of things going on with other bacteria and critters. You know, salt might actually be something to look into. Now, even athletes are using it for recovery and helping with their lung capacities and helping with their cardiovascular conditioning as well. So this is a fascinating topic. I'm really excited to interview Leo because I've heard musings about salt therapy for years, but never actually had a chance to dive into the details. So let's introduce you to Leo Tonkin. Hey, health junkies. I have Leo Tonkin on today, and we're going to be talking about salt therapy, something that I've been familiar with, heard of salt chambers, heard of salt caves in Europe, and excited to actually talk about it for once. So Leo, welcome to the Health Fix podcast. Thank you very much. Appreciate me having me on. Well, salt therapy is something that I was introduced to as a naturopath. It's kind of one of those things that we learned about for respiratory conditions. And now, of course, with the pandemic, it's been one of those things we've been thinking about. But one of the fascinating things that you kind of brought up in in one of my videos I I saw on you that I was watching was a lot of people suspect that these little salt lamps can do something for them, but that might not be the case. So I'd love for you to dispel some myths today. And we'll talk also about how you got into salt therapy too here in a little bit. Yeah, sure. When I first got into uh, salt therapy, also known as halo therapy, I really was surprised I didn't care about it. I grew up in My father was a physician, um, grew up in a unique environment. And I thought also that when you, the Himalayan salt lamps, a lot of people were promoting them as something that would absorb impurities in the air or create negative ions. And when we first started building salt rooms, including Himalayan salt, which is a great ambiance, uh, we did the research. And actually there was a uh, class action lawsuit against one of the manufacturers of the lamps where they were making claims, people with allergies and such. And maybe from a placebo effect, it may have worked, but uh, there's no health benefits from having those. Uh, It is a crystal. It is a natural element. It does have its own frequency. So if you put tons of salt in a room on the floor or in a cave like, I think you do alter the energy in the room, not to get too off tangent. In terms of respiratory or skin benefit, nada, nothing. Wow. Wow. And, you know, and that's something that, you know, that's kind of everybody's first introduction to to halo therapy and, and salt therapy. We kind of we kind of been sold on these lamps and I like the ambiance of them, no doubt. But obviously, if I'm spending money on something and it's in my office, I want to make sure that I get um, the most out of of what I'm putting my money into. Now, one of the things that you had mentioned um, in, in a couple of podcasts and something that I'm really interested in is, is indoor air health and how we can improve things because we've got a lot of folks talking about vaporizers and essential oils, but I'm also thinking, okay, what about purification? What about things we can do in that department? So, so give us a little scoop there and, and how you got into helping with indoor air. Yeah. When we started, uh, salt chamber, it really was more for skin and lung health and respiratory wellness. And primarily when you start looking at how many people have allergies, asthma, uh, bronchitis, COPD, cystic fibrosis, lung cancer, the list goes on. Um, And while halo therapy is a great complementary natural modality, uh, it really doesn't get to the source of the problem. What is, why is it? 
that we have so many people that have a respiratory condition or getting the cold or flu. And just like the pandemic that you mentioned, there are amazing amounts of airborne pathogens, allergens, bacteria in the air that we breathe. And you just start looking at the wildfires that have happened and you look at the quality of the air. Now that you have 8 billion people on the planet, um, you start to wonder. And so the World Health Organization actually says that there's about 90% of the world's population lives in poor air quality. And it's not just outdoor, to your point, it's indoor. And part of it is our HVAC systems. So if you think of your lungs and when you breathe things in, you have a kind of a built-in filter system through your nose and through your airways. You have these structures of these avioles and such that trap what you breathe in. That's like our filter system. Similarly, your HVAC system is like the lungs of your house or your school or your home. So the question becomes, what are you doing for that air? Do you have an air purifier? You're monitoring the quality of the air. How often do you change your filters? And which filters are you using? Um, What chemicals are you using when you clean your house? Or what do you cook with? And so it's in the invisible that we don't see it. Many people, when you have the sun coming into your house and you see that dust from how you see, you know, That's what we're breathing in, folks, the dander, the dust, these little microbes of everything. So you start to see, wow, am I being proactive and taking care of my lungs? And salt therapy is like a toothbrush to your respiratory system. Interesting. So it's pulling things out, scrubbing, helping you scrub things. Tell us more. A lot of people are familiar with salt as a therapeutic uh modality um it was used as a preservative uh many years ago in lieu of refrigeration why well nothing grows on salt salt kills as a surface um and it's amazing people use it as a saline solution for your eyes or contact why because it is antimicrobial it's anti uh, viral so salt is a very pure product Um, people are familiar with going to the ocean. That's more of a moist salt when you breathe it in. Uh, People have used neti pots. So salt is something um, that really is good for you. A lot of people think salt might not be. And that might be true for digestion or hypertension or high blood pressure. But breathing in a dry salt particle is what makes halotherapy distinct. It's a dry particle. So because it's dry, it absorbs what's inside your your lungs or on your skin. And the particles are so small that they penetrate deep. So your hair is about 50 microns in diameter. These salt particles are less than one micron. So they get deep in the respiratory system. And just like you put salt on a piece of eggplant, it pulls the moisture out. That's what it's doing. So it's going to pull out the stuff that gets trapped in your phlegm and in your mucus and the crystals of the salt kind of scrub it, clean it out. So you'll either bring it up or you'll pass through your urine system. Wow. I don't think many people would think of it that way, right? Most of us are kind of stuck in the, oh, okay, salt, we use it for food. Maybe some folks have gotten to the point where the electrolytes and and signaling within their body, but not as an agent to grab things and, and pull it out. So of course, the next question becomes, okay, what kind of salt is this? And and tell us more about your, your devices to help you to get sure. the salt into the air. Yeah, um, it's not going to the grocery store and using your kosher salt or Morton salt, and it's not Himalayan salt or sea salt, or there's a dead, you know, dead sea salt or anything. Um, there's a lot of varieties of salt around the world. Um, where this evolved from was really Eastern Europe in the salt mines underground. And back in the 1800s, they were chiseling and grinding salt, and it created a salt dust in the air. And this is what the workers were breathing in all day long. And you know what? 
they started to notice that they were healthier in their communities when they had their version of the of the pandemic, whether it's a bubonic plague or this or that, they stayed healthy. So they started doing research. And then back in the 70s, um, last century, uh, there was a piece of equipment called the halo generator. Halo is the Greek word for salt. And it's a device that takes pure grade sodium chloride. So it's a special salt that comes from the earth the land and the sea and the and the salt lake beds, but it gets purified to strip it from any non-soluble minerals and elements. And it's what they make, if you went to the hospital, saline solution from. It's a dry salt, 99.99% pure. And it goes into this device and it grinds it into a very fine dry salt aerosol that then gets dispersed inside of an enclosed room or a booth or some chamber um and that's what people are doing at spas and wellness facilities and uh, integrated and functional doctor's offices and all over where they're now becoming more aware of how important you can treat as well as prevent all types of respiratory conditions so it's breathing in this pure grade dry salt air wow that's, I mean, that's super fascinating. And and I think for a lot of people, they might be thinking too, like, okay, Leo, so so you're getting this this grade, this this 99.9% salt. Where where's your favorite place from to get it from? Where where are you getting the salt from? Where are your salt mines? Let's let's call it. Am that. I getting salted? Well, yes. <laughs> um well, I've been to Poland to uh, the the salt mines there, and it's pretty amazing. It's like a whole city underground all carved out of salt. Um, but we have a showroom here in Boca Raton, Florida, and we've designed and built about 3,000 facilities all over the country. And they're in all types of, uh, from the resorts, like uh, the Ritz-Carlton and the Four Seasons, to the community wellness centers, to fitness centers. So really, uh, there's all kinds of places. There's actually a whole association by the salt therapy association that has a directory so for some of your listeners they can go to there and find one of the salt therapy facilities near you but for me i have it right here in my showroom and i have a little portable device that we designed just for the home market with a pop-up tent that you sit in for about 10 minutes it's safe for kids children Moms love it because, you know, it's cold season. It's the winter time. You know how often kids are getting sick in school. So I take this portable unit with me and I do it when I'm in a hotel room, which many people know the air inside of those hotels can be really tough, especially if you have conditions, which is why my voice is sounding a little bit the way it is because I was in a hotel all last week. But I just sit in the shower stall and put the salt in the air. And that's what I do when I travel. It's very great. Oh, wow. You know, this is this is something that, you know, kind of makes me think about some of my patients who are sensitive, have allergies, but also I've got a lot of patients who have mold sensitivities in, in my practice and thinking of, you know, them and, and some of our flight attendants who travel and I'm going, oh, wow, this would be a great, great thing for them to be able to use. Yeah. I mean, everybody can benefit. It's not just that you need any kind of respiratory condition, but when you do think about what we breathe in, uh, statistically, you know, our lungs start to stop to de stop developing when we're, you know, in our early 30s. And you talk about longevity. Uh, there was a study done at John Hopkins back in the 80s, and they determined that the single most impactful thing that can impact the longevity of your life and the quality of your life is your ability to breathe. If you can't breathe well, you're going to have struggles, whether it's walking up the stairs, playing around a golf, picking up your grandkids, uh, or just doing any kind of things. And so that's why if you turn on the evening news and look at the national television commercials, what are you seeing? Pharmaceutical <laughs> companies, allergy, asthma, CO. So the, our current medical system is designed to keep you addicted to steroid inhalers, 
and taking pills all the time. And for some people, I get it. But we're evolving in the medical world. And technology and science is really creating breakthroughs. And you're starting to see pulmonologists, respiratory therapists, ENT, and obviously naturopathic integrated functional physicians and just all kinds of people finding out and being more aware. I had no idea about it. And years ago, I learned about it from somebody from Eastern Europe. And I was like, wow. And then when I looked into North America, there was less than 12 places in the country that was offering this. And so I started Salt Chamber uh, when I wanted to retire. And uh, here we are almost 12 years later, and still people aren't aware of it. So there's a long road to go in creating awareness. But to your point in the beginning, the pandemic put a big spotlight on respiratory. And often we don't think about things until something's wrong or broken, you know, and this is something that we need to embrace now, because unfortunately, there probably will be another pandemic. Yep. <laughs> sadly, sadly, that is my suspicion as well. And, yeah. and, you know, having something like the pop-up tent, I mean, awesome, because, you know, I love the concept of being able to go to the spa. And being able to, you know, purify the body, get some body work, have a salt room, but being able to do something day in, day out, I think is even more incredible for folks um, as well. So, so give us a little more. You had described, you could put it in, in the hotel room, in, in the tub area. Give us like how, how big is it? Some dimensions, give folks a little visual so they know kind of what we're talking about and, and give us a little more scoop on on how we take the salt and the little generator that that kicks out the salt because I think that might be the the halo generators. I'd love to hear about that, and I got a couple other questions on that, of course. Sure. Well, it's actually pretty simple. Um, the pop up tent kind of folds up. Some people have seen these things that when you go to watch a soccer game out in yeah. the rain and you pop up this little camping tent, it's 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 really kind of small and it fits very well. Um, and the halo generator uh, is designed and it's manufactured actually uh, to medical standards. So we uh, manufacture this where we manufacture blood pressure and nebulizer equipment. Um, it's very high end stainless steel. Salt can be corrosive. So it's very precise. Um, it's about nine inches tall and about four inches wa uh, diameter. And basically, you scoop, uh, we have these individual packets, it's kind of like a sugar packet, and you just empty it in, and it's got a key fob that you turn on, and it starts to grind and disperse the dry salt into the air. And these particles are so small that they start floating up, and you really want to keep it enclosed because you don't want salt getting all over your house. You don't want to get it in your bedroom. You don't, Some people go into a, a closet and do it. But this pop-up tent is something that you just can pop up, you plug it, you plug in the halo generator, and it goes. I mean, for people that are looking at this as a new business opportunity, or people that have a wellness facility, or a massage, or yoga, you're starting to see all types of uh, environments building salt rooms. There are some places uh, around the country that you can do yoga and salt at the same time. You can do breath work. You do guided meditation. There are just so many ways as a business model that is out there. Uh, and there's so many spas and resorts and other places that people are going to, chiropractors and so many more, putting in these, you know, commercial booths. Think of a telephone booth. And for those of you who can recall what a telephone booth was, right? <laughs> right. Or a payphone. You know, you don't have those really anymore. No, oh, I take pictures when I see them because it's just like so <laughs> unique these days. Because yeah, no, that that size of something is you know a great size. And and speaking of that, you know, kind of kind of the the payphone kind of booth or, or phone booth, I I have seen a couple of posts there on your website about a sauna and being able to kind of retrofit a sauna or figure out how to add one to a sauna. Give us the scoop there because I think a lot of people right now are going. How can I how can I incorporate this into something I've already got? Kind of like you were saying, layering, layering the the therapies. Yeah, layering and stacking um different wellness modalities is, is a great idea. 
we do have a, um, a retrofit kit that has a bracket for this to go into a sauna. The thing you want to understand is, do you have a traditional or an infrared? If it's a traditional sauna, you want to put like a cover on it so salt particles aren't getting in. But the other thing is, and, and not to confuse people, you don't want to do sauna and salt at the same time. Because when you do a sauna, a lot of the detox benefits come from sweating. And so you're introducing moisture into the environment. And this is about dry salt. And so not only is your skin going to get crusty and really bad if it's moist, that's why you want to be dry, uh, you're not going to get the skin benefit. And one of the things that we did not talk about yet is that because these particles are so small and they can penetrate deep into your respiratory, they also penetrate the first layer of the epidurus. And so when you think about the characteristics of halotherapy, which is that it's super absorbent and dry, it's antibacterial, right? And it's anti-inflammatory. That's why when you breathe it in, it opens up the airways. So you're breathing in more oxygen, more oxygen to your red blood cells is going to increase your cardiovascular. And that's mm -hmm. why athletes are doing this as a treatment because it's increasing lung function lung volume they're using it for recovery pre and post workout but for the skin you think about inflammation that's one of the causes for people that have eczema or psoriasis to break up so if you expose your skin to the dry salt it's actually going to impact the skin rejuvenation think of people that might have acne the bacteria it pulls out the oil so to have more rigidity in the skin you expose your skin while you're sitting in your sauna or salt booth or a salt room, and you get that benefit as well. And when you can just chill, even for 10 minutes, and do some mindfulness, and just do focus on your breath, you kind of get to a different mental wellness as well. So I like to think about it as mind, body, and breath, which is what it's all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the more we talk about breath work, the more we talk about how connecting to our, our deeper, um, energies, let's put it that way, our, our inner vibe. I mean, it's, it's so important and being able to have something that will add, like you were saying, stacking, I think is incredibly huge. Now here's one interesting thing. And I'm, I'm curious about this because I've been noticing this over and over again in my labs when I work on with folks, I keep seeing sodium actually being low on chemistry panels over and over again. Have you seen any results with, with researchers that had anyone else talk about that connection to possibly chemical air pollution or, or just stress in general? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think there's been a perception that salt is bad for you. Yeah. And you know, the first thing, you know, I do when I wake up in the morning is I hydrate and I actually use a Sole mixture where I have Himalayan salt rocks in a jar of spring water that saturates the water to a certain level. That's great for a pH balance. Some people may use things like um, LMNT, uh, one of our partners, where it's a package of sodium, has some magnesium and other minerals in it. We need salt into our system. And I think salt has gotten a bad rap in the past. Yeah. And I think people need to learn more about how salt really is good for you. Um, obviously, halo therapy is breathing it in, which it doesn't really impact any of your sodium um, benchmarks or um, metrics per se or markers. Um, but salt intake and understanding your metabolic system and how salt gets into your system, I think more and more people need to learn about that. And I think you're starting to see how things like hypotonic saline solutions that yeah. have been utilized, nebulizers that are just more of a moist salt. Um, I drink my sodium in my uh, throughout the day. I don't think people really realize that. Obviously, if you're doing exercise, you know, after you do a salt session, we tell people hydrate. And I don't. I think part of it has to do with that. Are we flushing our system out? And salt's really great for doing that. You know, every pretty much every 
drug or supplement that's out there has some form of sodium chloride because it's a great transport system for getting things into your blood system. So that's why if you drink salt water, it's going to get throughout your system a lot faster. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, there are so many different flushes, right? Even your digestive flush with higher amounts of salt. I think if we we step back from it, and one of the things I think a lot of folks have been, like you said, brainwashed about salt is bad. Don't don't take extra salt in. I think, like you said, the pure salt is what you're using. A lot of folks are confused as to, well, isn't Morton's or isn't commercial salt pure? And this is something that I have to keep highlighting over and over again. Like, no, there, there's other things in it. And so I'd love to hear your kind of spiel, spiel on what you say as a blanket statement for the difference between pure salt and table salt. I, I think it depends on the purpose of what you're using salt for, right? You live up in Wisconsin, and when it's iced over, they put certain salt on the roads. Yep. Um, there's salt that we use. Um, you know, a lot of people, when Morton Salt came out with the iodine, we're not getting enough iodine. Um, most salt products that are out there for consumption is about 96 to 97% sodium chloride. Um, Himalayan salt, I use a lot in my own cooking. Uh, we've even designed uh, aging rooms for meat where they have salt Himalayan salt bricks in there that kind of evaporate with the humidity to help tenderize and flavor the meat. That's why it was used as a preservative back in the day. And why, you know, you, if you watch the Food Channel, it's always about getting the right seasoning of salt. Salt's right. good for protein. So um, same within our system. It's all about the proteins that we have in our system. So most of the salt that's out there is pretty much good salt to eat. Uh, you want to look to see if it's a natural, if there's any additives to it. Um, that's why I like to use just pure Himalayan salt. We don't use it in the halo generator because some of these salts could have other minerals and get stuck in your respiratory system that are not water soluble. Um, the sodium chloride we have, you really don't want to use it as a food salt because you need some aspect of the coating on the salt. So whether it's a, uh, organic salt or, you know, most salt is, you know, salt's not man-made. Um, so Redmond salt from Utah, you got different salts around. There's over hundreds of varieties of where salt comes from, but you want to take a look at the purification. But you know, there's salt from Africa, there's salt from the Middle East, there's salt, Caribbean salt, Dead Sea salt. Uh, some say that it's great for more of a bath, right? Epsom salt, for example, yeah. some of your listeners may be into flotation and what they utilize for salt therapy, where you put, you know, 800 pounds of Epsom salt in this kind of a tub that you float in. And that's always been good for you as well. Foot salt baths, other salt baths that are out there. So all kinds of salt, but the salt that you breathe in is is a pure grade salt. I was hoping you'd kind of go down that route to kind of give us the, the breakdown. Because I mean, I think a lot of people, if they if they invest it in a halo generator, they're going to know that like, okay, you know, we've got to use this one type of salt, but I yeah. think it's important to keep that that distinguish meant out there because the salts with minerals, obviously we don't want minerals getting stuck in the lungs. We want to make sure that we're using the purest possibility um, out there. Now, I'm super intrigued. I love spas. I used to own one myself. And and I, I know that with the salt chamber, you've got a list of different folks out there and you even were able to rattle off um, the Sundara spa here um, in Wisconsin. I'm I'm very curious with that. Can folks find all the spas you've worked with on the Salt Chamber website or or do you have a, a Yeah, so we do have a directory at saltchamberinc.com. If you go to our resource page and go down to our uh, directory, you'll see them all over the country and all over the world, as well as the salttherapyassociation.org. They have a directory. Uh, again, um, there's probably around 4,000 facilities around uh, the U.S. Uh, in Canada. Um, and this is something that's just becoming more and more of a business model. If you think about it, 
uh, for those of you on the business side, putting in an a salt booth or a, designing a really cool salt room um, is not uh, a, a large amount of money. Um, but the return on the investment, you don't need a special license. You don't need a licensed therapist or anything. Um, and the salt is costing you pennies. And so a lot of people are going to facilities and they're paying anywhere from 15 and $25 on the lower end up to packages where you're going into a facility and getting a certain amount of sessions a week or a month. Many of them might have other modalities like infrared or cryotherapy or flotation or red light or other modalities. So you do want to shop around and take a look at it. And if you're interested in that pop-up salt booth and checking that out, we're going to give all your listeners a 10% discount and they can go to salttherapyhome.com and see what that portable unit's all about. Awesome. Well, we will definitely make sure we get that folks in at drjkrausnd.com in the show notes. And I, of course, will put it out on Instagram as well. Now, I, I'm, i you know, having owned a spa before, I always think about stacking things. Of course, I'm an acupuncturist as well. And so I'm thinking, how cool would it be to have, you know, the salt going during acupuncture? You can. There are people that are doing that. They're doing group acupuncture inside salt rooms. They're doing it individually. You can actually take a treatment room and make it into a multi-purpose room where you can have the halo generator attached to the room. And while you're doing certain modalities, obviously you don't want to have a lot of electronics in a room because these salt particles can get into, let's say a biocharger or a hydrofacial or other type of equipment. Um, but massage and salt, um, acupuncture and salt, breath work, rolfing, reflexology, Reiki, so many things that people are doing. So while you're just sitting there, I mean, we have facilities now that are specifically designed where you're doing IV hydration. So while you're getting your drip on, you can get salted by breathing in the salt while you're lying there. So a lot of interesting modalities in this cool wellness space that we're all in, that we're more into our self-care and you have people like yourselves that are really putting the word out there, uh, informing and education is, I think, the most important thing. But a lot of ways that you could be utilizing it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I have uh, so many ways in my head that I'm thinking about. And plus, you know, one thing, let's talk about this for a second, because I think a lot of people have seen the really cool spa rooms where the salt you know, decor. And that's one thing that you guys work with as well on the walls. And, you know, to a, to a non-educated eye, you think to yourself, oh, everything's coming out of the decor, just like we had talked about before, you know, with the salt lamp. And so I would love for you to talk about the decor, how you can, you know, work it into things, but also understanding that that's not exactly where the benefit's coming from. Right. Is it? I mean, people just love seeing these backlit Himalayan brick yeah. walls. They're very, I mean, the color, there's two different ways you can do. There's the the typical pinkish amber kind of color that just creates a very, uh, for those that are into chromotherapy or you looking at color therapy, there is some real science behind that. Um, and so when you're in that type of environment, it just creates this kind of relaxation, soothing uh, there are people that are doing sound baths, Himalayan bowls, crystal bowls, while being in a salt room that has the Himalayan salt on the floor. So it looks like it's a beach. You know, you got this cool texture. Uh, some do it more cave-like where they're taking chunks of these Himalayan lamps sort of that are cut and put into structures. Uh, twinkle skies like you got. I mean, you can get I mean, it can get expensive, right? A lot of people may just put one feature wall. Um, we take Himalayan salt uh, as bricks. Um, they also are white Himalayan, more pure, where you can put color lights behind them and create different colors in doing it. Um, we do in our salt booths, we have uh, color therapy lights where you have things in there. So the, it's just really beautiful. You can put it in a sauna. You'll see a lot of saunas now yeah. where they're putting that as a decor. But again, to your point, it's only decor. Um, there's no, even when you heat it up, you'd really have to heat salt 
to about 1500 degrees to get the molecules to separate and create something, but that's not healthy. So it's just been a really cool decor element. And when you're looking at environments, when you want to take a time out, you want to break, take a breath break, you want to take a mental time out, you want to do something that's good for your skin and your lungs, why not? Right. I I mean, I'm looking in my, I I do my podcast in my basement. I'm looking over in this corner area. I'm like wondering what to do with that space. Maybe, maybe I need to create a little something in there. So of course I'm going to ask now, because I'm, I'm just curious what, I know you've done a lot of different projects. What's been like one of your favorites in terms of a spa or, or a space that is so relaxing and, and just one of your favorite ones to, to create. Give give us a scoop. Well, we just, I just came back from being in New York and um, there's a facility there, a hotel, a property called Virgin Hotel. As many people know Virgin, Richard Branson and Virgin. Um, And there's a new rebrand of a spa and fitness group called Exhale. Uh And they just, Exhale just opened up their new flagship in the Virgin Hotel in New York City. And they're going to be opening up others. And we created this salt recovery lounge with them that has these really cool chairs from oakworks where it's this sound vibration chair that you sit in and you got this beautiful brick wall and you've got the salt come and you could do an iv you could do compression like the therabody you can do this sleep mask all these modalities that you can just go and lie down and just exhale and it's just really a cool thing they just opened up literally on friday very cool space and then there's a couple that are on the west coast where they really created a really cool cave-like structures that when you go in there it's like wow think of disney world and you think of some of the events so we got some very creative people that are doing all kinds of things really to create a a place to go and relax you know all kinds of spas have these lack relaxation rooms to, to sit in. Well, now how to be intentional, how to have the right kind of music therapy. How do you, how do you get the senses involved in creating multi-sensory experiences at home? And, and we've been doing residential projects. We did a beautiful salt room for Tony Robbins here up in West Palm beach. He's got an amazing salt room that we did. And so there's a lot of very cool residential, uh, projects that people can do. Some have good budgets to do them, but you can do something very simple. And just to your point, do one panel. Uh, we have people that use it as a headboard in their bedroom or um, you know, in other places. So it's very cool as a decor element. And we have designers on our team to help people figure that out. Wow. That's so fun. That's so fun. Funny you should mention Exhale. I worked at Exhale, the old Exhale in Chicago before all of it changed over. And it's a great, great group. Um, You know, I'm I'm excited to see how New York goes. But uh, just having a space in your home for relaxation and being able to design it, I think, is is a fun, fun place to start. And, And, you know, like you were saying, it doesn't have to be a lot of money in this case. Now, of course, folks might be interested in going, okay, Leo, so can they contact you guys? How do they contact you guys to be able to design something? We're looking for sure. ideas. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, they for sure go to our website at saltchamberinc.com or salttherapyhome.com. You can also call our toll-free number at 855-LOVE-SALT. That's <laughs> L-U-V-S-A-L-T. So that's 855 Love Salt, and we're Salt Chamber Inc. Inc.com. Wow. Well, you've inspired me to want to retrofit some stuff in the back of my uh, basement here. And I know spas, you know, around and and anyone who might be listening right now might be thinking like, oh, wow, there's got to be some way we can stack something in. And and sounds like you guys are are the folks to get the scoop from. So. Great stuff here. Can't wait to to share this one. And the pop-up tent. Now, of course, yeah. that is that is something that intrigues me as well. And for folks to kind of take on the go. Will you remind folks how they can find that one and sure. how they can connect with you everywhere you're you're yep. 
No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're on instant, uh, we're on social media. Look at salttherapyhome.com. You'll see the pop-up tent with the portable halo generator that also has a sauna conversion kit for folks. And we're going to give you all a 10% discount on all of that. Um, it has everything that you need to know there. Um, and, and some folks are using it as a business opportunity. They're going to the schools. They're going to doctor's offices, educating people about it. Um, bring it to your local health fair. Uh, bring Senior citizens are doing it. Senior living facilities. I have so many friends of mine, like my mom is 84, and I bring it to her. And it's it. she just loves it. It clears her up. So there's just so many possibilities. We have moms with kids that are pre-asthmatic or there's, you know, there's colds going around in school. First sign of sniffles, pop that thing up, go in there. So check us out on Instagram and Facebook, go to salttherapyhome.com. And if you got certain conditions, we've got great uh, salt therapy consultants on board to help you out as well. Ooh, let's talk about that for a second, though, because I mean that I know we didn't dive into all the different conditions that one can can work with with this. But tell us about the. the yeah, I mean, there, there, there's so many ways that respiratory affects people. Mm -hmm. And we have a certified halo therapist program from the Salt Therapy Association that dives deep into the lung and respiratory system. And when you start to look at what are the some of the things that we can be doing to really take care of our lungs in a proactive way, there's a lot of things that we need to be doing. You know, a lot of us are mouth breathers, for except, for example, uh, how to do the right breath work. I know I had cancer six years ago. I'm a survivor. I had a stage four tumor. I had a trach in my, in my uh, throat. And I had to learn how to eat and breathe differently as I was being ra uh, radiation and chemo. And uh, I'm now in complete remission and cured. But I learned a lot more deeper about the personal impact about how we breathe impacts our well-being. And I think we take it for granted. Um, we don't, we're not aware of our breath uh, during the day. And so there's a lot of things to learn that can help our breathing. And there's a lot of conditions that we don't understand. Everyone has that some form of allergies. Do people really understand what are their triggers? What about the air filters? I mean, I live here in Florida. We run our air conditioning a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And we were told back in the day, oh, change your filter every six months. You got to be doing it every month. And you got to have the right filter. What is it rated for? You have devices out there that are air filters in your home. Get them. Things like Molecule or other products that are out there air pure, different ones, um, get an air quality control yeah, a system to monitor. Um, it's just something that we're not aware of until it's kind of like our car when the red light goes on. Oops, now mm -hmm. I got to go do something. But right. are we changing the oil regularly? What about even our car? You know, there's an air filter. Do you know what the brake dust and the rubber dust that is on our roads that we breathe in all day long that we're not aware of. It's interesting. So it's something that should be top of mind. There's not a lot of contraindications for doing salt therapy. It's, it's safe. Uh, the only contraindications are people with certain stage of lung cancer. You know, you don't want to expose open wounds to mm -hmm. salt because it could sting a bit, right? Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, um, I've got four grandkids and uh, they've been doing salt since they've been six months old. Um, one particularly had a respiratory issue, uh, being bored a little premature and he's been in the salt booth. So, uh, you just use a lower concentration. Athletes are doing it right before they're going to work out as well as play in sports opens up the airway, more oxygen coming in a lot of applications for so many people. Oh, I, I could think of a million. I mean, you know, more than just the relaxation, I'm thinking folks with chronic sinus issues, which I see more and more. I'm thinking sleep apnea, having something in your bedroom. Like you're yep. mentioning the headboard. I'm like, hmm, a whole salt bedroom. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, that's one of the reasons I think, you know, Tony Robbins got salt therapy because he it was from sleep, you know, when salt anti-inflammatory. So when it reduces the inflammation throughout your sinus, you know, nasal cavity, all the way down to your, you know, your esophagus down through your vocal cords and everything. It just reduces the inflammation, 
which is one of the causes of sleep apnea. And so people that are on, C, you know, CPAP machines or other things, we have people that are doing that, not using those anymore. We have people that were on uh, COPD on oxygen tanks, not using that often. Same thing with steroid inhalers. I'm not telling you that this is a replacement, um, but as you start getting your lungs healthier and focus on respiratory, you'll see a big difference in the quality and the longevity of your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Wow. This has been a fabulous conversation and and I, you know, lots of things enlightened here. And I think a lot of folks are going to be thinking differently about, hmm, how can they maybe incorporate some salt into their world? If not dabbling in a spa first experience and, and then yeah. seeing if it's, if it's for you. So Thanks again, Leo, for coming on. So much good information. I sincerely appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Look forward to hearing some feedback from your listeners. I have no doubt that folks will love this. And we'll make sure, guys, that this all of the all of the websites, all the details, and your discount code will be at drjkrausnd.com. Thanks, Leo. Appreciate it. You bet. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix Podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, Please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.